Marconi's famous transatlantic transmission. You have some doubts about that? I do indeed, but I need to give you some background information. Marconi was a promoter. Uh, his company built commercial radio transmitters and receivers uh, transmitting Morse code, but sales were stalled. What he needed was a spectacular demonstration and nothing could be more spectacular than a wireless link between Europe and America. So he announced he would do just that before the end of 1901. He had two huge antennas built, one in Poltu on the west coast of Cornwall, uh, the other on Cape Cod. And he hired engineers and consultants to design and build uh, uh, transmitters. But the construction of the antennas was flimsy and they both came crashing down by September. He went into an emergency mode and decided that transmission would be only one way from Pole to, to Newfoundland, which was a bit closer. Uh, the, the transmitter at Poldew got a smaller antenna, a temporary one, and the antenna in Newfoundland was to be simply a wire held aloft by a kite. He instructed Poldew to send the letter S, three dots, uh, continuously every day between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. Uh, starting on December 11th, 1901. It was not exactly a controlled experiment. Uh, he knew what was being sent and he knew when. He and his assistant claimed they heard the three dots briefly uh, on the first two days, uh, even though there was a gale, but nothing after that. Now, most scientists were skeptical of Marconi's claim because there is no line of sight transmission. Uh, the two points are 2,200 miles apart and between them the curvature of the earth forms a mountain 125 miles high. As it turned out later, there is a layer in the atmosphere that reflects radio waves and thus makes transmission over long distance possible. But this reflection works well only at night. Uh, Marconi's entire signal path was in daylight. He himself provided proof that the transmission did not really take place. Uh, three months later, he repeated the experiment with a better receiver and a better antenna uh, mounted on a ship traveling from Portsmouth to New York. At night, he was able to hear the signal up to 2,100 miles away uh, during daylight, the distance was only 700 miles.